Up next, we're going to be talking about compression. And with all of our effects, but especially with compression in the music making process, when in doubt, leave it out and always have an intention if you are bringing it on to any kind of audio track or instrument track. So what I wanted to do was actually go back and pull from our old Dynamics processors that we've already looked at. The Loud Max, so the Peak Limiter, and then the Bittersweet, our transient designer, and replicate some of the same things we were doing with those with a compressor. Because Dynamics processors, all Dynamics processors, are pretty much doing the same thing. And it's what you can do if you went into clip gain, and that's changing the volume of something over time. So with a compressor or like a peak limiter, there's some kind of threshold. And when that threshold is breached, the sound is brought down, right? That's the basic idea there. But it can be done in so many different ways. And there are a lot of nuances with compressors that people spend hours and hours and days debating um, on the internet or in pro professional audio circles. It's a very common debate. And that's because people get really obsessive about it. Because uh, for some people, um, the type of compressor that they put on a particular instrument or source sound really defines their style of mixing or how they go about uh, working with audio. For us, we're not that concerned with it, but you will notice it right away because of how different the compressor will sound as compared to, say, the Loud Max, even though we're trying to do a very similar process. There are differences, we'll talk about those, but the overall idea is basically the same. The big difference between a compressor and like the transient designer or the peak limiter are the time controls, okay? It's the attack time and the release time. That is really the critical part to understanding compression. It's not just about talking what's going on with dynamic range. We're really focused on when is that kicking in, the timing of it, and that is what is uh, so crucial, really, to the whole compression process in general. But let's start by peak limiting this drum beat that we have right here. So here it is uh, right now without any sort of processing on it and no gain changes. So that's pretty loud. I'm going to go ahead and drop that down by maybe 4 dB and also uh, turn down my speaker volume some. Okay, there we go, that's good. So when we bring on the peak limiter, what are we expecting to see? I'm expecting that if I'm in link mode, I'm gonna see these peaks being trimmed down quite a bit to kind of match a little bit more what's going on in the quieter parts. And that's what actually defines your dynamic range. So the loudest peak to the lowest point, that is your dynamic range of an audio signal. So let's go and grab the loud max here. I'm gonna link these guys and I'm gonna really peak limit this thing. So Let's go ahead. Okay, so we're looking at close to like 15 decibels of gain reduction here. That's what that meter is showing us. So when it's at its loudest, it's being brought down by close to 15 decibels. And this thing looks like it's working on the entire signal. So even when it's quite quiet, it's still reducing the gain. So let's go in here and let's bounce this out. And in this case, pre-fader, post-fader, doesn't matter. It's at zero. So here it is. Here's the after. And we can take a listen to that. So the before. And the after. And now the reason you're using a peak limiter typically is that you're going to be bringing that level back up. So you're not usually going to have this in link control. And so if this wasn't in link control, this would be pushing all the way on whatever we had that output ceiling at. So if it was at zero, it would be all the way at the top. If we put this to like minus one, you'd see one decibel of headroom. But we can just as easily go into the gain here and manually bring this up ourselves if we wanted. And now you can see if I bring this up by 12, that that dynamic range, the difference between the loudest and the softest has been greatly reduced. So if we listen to these two back to back, there's a good chance that you're going to perceive the second one as being louder, even though from a peak perspective, they're not even close. This one is going to be peaking out, uh, I guess, around something like minus six. And then we'll see where this one peaks out. Let's actually bring this even down a little bit. Let's just go plus nine and listen to these two back to back and keep an eye on the meters.
All right, so to me, those sound to be almost the same level in terms of loudness, just sheerly how loud it is. And one thing I could also do here is bring these to exactly the same amount on the peak. So this one peaked out here around minus 10. This one was at minus 4.6. I can't do that math exactly, but if I go down like minus five additional on the gain to like minus nine, now we have kind of a more fair comparison with the peak signals. And now you're really going to hear that difference and you're focusing on clarity. So what parts can I hear? What parts sort of start to fade away? So kind of listen to the hats and the quieter nuances of this drum loop. And then the second one, you'll definitely be able to hear them. So here we go back to back. Right, so you can definitely hear what is going on there when we put the peak limiting on. But peak limiting can also be accomplished using a compressor. So let's take a look at that. So what exactly is differentiating a peak limiter from, say, a compressor like what we have here? And this is actually technically a dynamic equalizer, but if we turn all of these off and go in here to threshold. We have wideband, which means it's going all the way across the frequency spectrum. So now this is basically a compressor. The difference between the peak limiter and the compressor really has to do with the attack time. So when does the compression kick in? With a peak limiter, it's instantaneous. There's normally like a look ahead feature on a peak limiter, meaning that it's actually scanning the audio before it even starts to process it. So it knows when that peak is coming up and it's able to clamp down on it. With compressors, specifically like digital compressors, you can take the attack time and put it way, way down, all the way here to 0 0.10 millisecond. All right, so that is our attack time super quick. It shouldn't really let anything get through. And if I play this back now, we can listen and hear what's happening. And this yellow band is actually showing us where the compression is occurring. So this is like our gain reduction meter. You can also see the gain reduction happening here um, when you see any blue going down to the left. That is uh, gain being taken away, thus gain reduction. But with a peak limiter, the other thing that differentiates it from a compressor is that its ratio is normally really high. Like normally it's like infinity to one, which just means if I change this ratio, for example, and I go to like five to one, this is saying that for every five decibels that crosses this threshold, and in this case, it would have to be going way over the threshold, have to be like at plus five dB, only one decibel is going to be output. And normally, when we start to get closer into limiter range, we're talking about 10 to one. So it stops being a compressor, it's more of a limiter, meaning that it's really clamping down quite hard on the signal. So 10 decibels go through, uh, but only one is coming out the other end. And with this compressor, the max we can go is 10 to one. So we're now in limiter territory, not really peak limiter, but still a limiter. And it's going to be clamping down pretty hard anytime something breaches this threshold. So as we're playing this back, I'm going to start to pull down on the threshold and you're going to see the gain reduction to uh, start occurring here. So let's just put this into loop, bring our loop on over. And this meter is showing us down to 12 decibels of gain reduction. And when we were actually working with that peak limiter, I think we saw close to like 15. So I could even pull this down further. I'll pull this down to like 26 or so. And that's going to be quite a bit of gain reduction. And believe it or not, this actually sounds pretty transparent. Um, about as transparent as that peak limiter, maybe not quite as transparent, but still in the ballpark. And the final setting I could mess with here is indeed the release control. And the release control is telling us the speed at which the compressor is going to recover from the gain reduction. So if I put this really fast, you're going to see that gain reduction shooting back up any time, or I should say coming back closer to zero. It's going to start shooting back up any time that the compressor isn't working. So anytime it, the threshold isn't being breached, it's going to start shooting back up.
And this is where you start to hear some of the artifacts because it's struggling to recover that quickly. Um, and with the other one, with the Loud Max, it actually has like this automatic release control that for the more you are compressing, the more gain reduction that's occurring, then the slower it will start to recover because that will make it sound more natural. Because you can hear right now, this doesn't sound natural at all. But if I pull this release time a little bit longer, it sounds a little bit more natural, except for maybe that one moment where it's very quiet in the signal. But I'm pretty happy with this right now. And we're really doing very similar process to what we did with that peak limiter. And now if I want, I can go in here and I can bounce this guy out. And let's take a look and see what's going on. So in this one, did I bring the volume up? I brought the gain up by nine. So I'm going to bring the gain up by nine here as well, just to make it fair. And if we go in and look, okay, we can see the difference right away. And this obviously didn't clamp down on the peaks as hard as the peak limiter did. And again, that's because of the ratio. Infinity to one is a lot different than 10 to one. But we can listen to these two guys back to back and uh, also listen to the original. I've gone ahead and set it up so that all three of these are now peaking at the same amount. We'll start by listening to the original, followed by the compressed, and followed by the peak limited. So here we go. So what I hope you notice from this is that in that last version, we're really crushing things incredibly hard to a point where it's not really realistic when we're listening to that, right? It kind of sounds uh, quite harsh, but in the right production, that might be exactly what you're looking for. Having something crushed that hard might be the only way where you can hear everything. Whereas if you had something that was a little bit quieter, a little more spaced out, not really so full of instruments, you might be able to get away with the original, which has probably already been compressed somewhat from the beginning. So that's the idea idea, that's how you could set up a compressor to act at least a little bit like a peak limiter.